Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all and welcome to Straight Up with MS and all its crazy little circles here on MS and Me Radio, which is brought to you by the MS Global Support Network, which I think is a big deal because, you know, when you go worldwide, um, better things happen. And I'm your host, before I forget to tell you, I'm your host, Patty Long, and you can find me on Twitter at MS and It For Life. And I spell that M-S-E-N-I-T, the number four, L-I-F-E. I I don't know if y'all can hear it or not, but after last week sounding like I was in an echo chamber, um, I thought this week I would try outside again. Now, last week that was impossible. It was pouring. But right now it's not raining and... Everything is just wet, and it's really, really windy. So I am outside on my front porch instead of my back porch, and the goat down the road is crying. And, um, you know, it's really sad when you hear the goat crying like that. The goat's lonely. You know, I feel bad for it. But, boy, you know, um, if you're going to have a pet, no matter what kind of pet it is, whether it's an inside pet, an outside pet, or what, Give it enough attention, people. Please don't leave it crying all the time because this poor goat sits out there and cries non-stop. Anyways, moving on. Um, You know, life with MS is pretty crazy. It really is. It's not really about juggling because, well, people with MS don't really have that great of an executive, cognitive, executive function, I should say. And <laughs> there's the goat again. And um, so this executive functioning, all it is, is your ability to remember what you're doing while you're doing it, to be able to follow through with things and complete tasks, to be able to follow directions, simple directions, to be able to... Um, make decisions even the most simplest of decisions like whether you're hungry or thirsty um it's the ability to put your emotions in check um because your emotions well your emotions play into everything with ms very drastically and that ability is actually part of your cognitive functioning. So if you feel like, you know, you're going crazy and it's just wildly out of control, know that this is something that happens to those of us with MS. And I've told you about strategies I have um, in the past. And I think I did last week, but honestly, I don't remember last week anymore. Last week's in the past, and I'm in the moment, and I have to stay in the moment. It's one of my rules, you know. Um, I told you about that before. There's an article on MSME Media that Erica Lyons Richardson posted up there for me very graciously, um, and and... I can't thank her enough for doing that. I was in this dilemma of, okay, how do I get this published? Because I've been being asked, well, what are your rules? What are your rules, Patty? And, you know, these rules took me a long time to develop. And one of them is living in the here and now, never thinking about yesterday and worrying about the past things that have happened. And never thinking about tomorrow and the future things that may or may not happen. Because none of us, none of us have a crystal ball. And (laughs) 
Hachi, what's going on, but yeah. my dog is getting crazy here, y'all. So, anyways, um, these are all executive functioning kinds of things, and emotional control is definitely a part of it. So, that I forget exactly which rule number it is because the order of them sort of changed up so that it would read a little better and and all of that you know and I had to reword some of it so it would be a little clearer for you guys and had to take out the angriness because I was an angry person when I was writing these rules um, and the reason why I was angry was because I was on a medication that was causing it and you know all the antidepressants in the world cannot counteract the effects of a drug that does this to you, a medication that is supposed to be helping you, but yet it's causing this other problem with anger and sadness, depression in general, and it's wildly out of control. The longer you take that medication, the worse it gets, so they keep pumping more and more antidepressants in you and trying to figure out what combo will work for you. Well, my experience is there is no combo that can overpower that reaction to a medication. Um, it's better to switch DMTs or switch um, the type of muscle relaxant you are on for your own um, issues with spasticity, you know, it's just, it, in the long run, it just seems from my experience that that's the way to go because we do have lots to choose from now. Well, I say lots, but it's lots in comparison. And um, they've actually put on my chart now because this same side effect has taken place with a couple of different medications so they've got it on my chart that I'm allergic to this certain thing that I'm not even sure what it is you know it's not something that I've heard of so it's a component within the drug that makes it work or that um, the activating part it's something it's one of the comp these components not the actual um beta ferron for example but the um the way it's all clumped together and put together so then you can take your shot and the way it is made so something in one of those ingredients is now on my list of things i'm allergic to and i'm glad it is because like i said the longer you are taking a medication that makes you feel this way the more out of control your life becomes and it it's it's crazy that the first inclination of our doctors is that you have a reason to be depressed let's send you to a psychiatrist and put you on antidepressants for this and that's where the problem is because when it's caused by the medication it, the same sorts of things aren't going to work because now it's got a different cause. So I encourage you to live in the moment. I encourage you to um, have lists and tricks that will help you with your executive functioning. Um, and uh, get rid of medications that impair this even further because we can't go through life not being able to function you know um, it's just it's just not a good thing so I try and do the same thing every day in the same order and then I have a weekly list telling me that okay this day I do laundry and this day I do this and this day I do that and then comes the kink in the armor and my days get out of whack and it all goes to pieces and lately I've been very worried about my father my daddy he's been like my rock 
through my adventure with MS. And he's just done so much for me. And I want to be there for him the same way that he has always been there for me. He has seen things that other people have never seen. He has listened to me and tried to understand, even though what's going on with me is so incomprehensible to him. But he tries. And he's my rock. And he always will be, you know. So I really want to be there for him. And he's been really, really sick for a long time now. Well, I say a long time. It depends on your definition of a long time. It's been like a month, maybe. And I'm not real good with time. That's a concept that is part of your executive functioning, guys. And that all takes place in your frontal load, by the way. So the heavier your lesion load is in your frontal lobes, then the more executive functioning issues you'll find you have. Um, and this is proven facts. And, of course, they're just looking at one aspect of our brain. They can't see inside the tissue until after we've passed. So they can't tell us what's going on in there. And hopefully technology will improve to the point where they can see that. And they're getting better and better at this all the time. So, um, you know, if it wasn't for technology, I would have been legally blind before I was 20, as predicted by my doctors, my ophthalmologists, when I was a itty-bitty child. And the reason is because at that time, I think they could only correct to like a negative seven. And I was, my, my vision was deteriorating. Um, I've, I'm very nearsighted and I've got this huge astigmatism, so my pictures are all shifted crazy. And... Um, it's just growing and growing and rapidly deteriorating and um, they didn't think that you know I was like seven eight years old I guess when they were telling my dad that and they handed me this Braille card and told me I should learn Braille while I'm learning to read but technology kept up with me and so over the years as my eyes got worse and worse that correctable vision number, that magic number that started at about a negative 7, went up to a negative 9, and then a negative 13. And now it's even higher than that. Um, it's, I think, a negative 15 to a negative 20, somewhere in there, that they can correct. And along with that correction, the astigmatism could be corrected more. And mine is a, a whopper of an astigmatism. It's nearly a plus four. So um, the other eye is not as bad, but it's close, you know. So this is huge. And, and these types of things with technology changing is, is really, really important. Not just to those of us with MS, but to everybody who has ever had anything or whoever gets anything because it helps in all areas. So it's because of, of the, how much more advanced we are that I am really worried about my daddy who's been sick for so long. It is because they still haven't figured it out, but they're going to. Um, he's in the hospital right now, and I wish him well. I love you, Daddy. Um, and I am at home right now because it's supposed to be pouring down rain. And I'm not sure if that has changed or not, but I can't drive in the rain. So rather than having him worry about me, I'm going to respect his wishes and stay home today. But yesterday I went down there. And this, see, this whole thing has kind of thrown a kink in my armor. So my routine is off. And that's understandable. I mean, it, you know, when somebody you love is sick and you want to be there for them, you want to be there for them. So your routine changes. Now, a normal person is capable of making these changes and 
in a snap of a finger get there, but not me. So yesterday morning, I was up at 8.30. I talked to my daddy and told him I was going to get my shower and get dressed and head down there and I'd call him as I was leaving so he wouldn't worry that I hadn't gotten there yet. Because he does know me and he knows how much trouble I have with these things. And so I get up and I have to do the first thing in the morning things because those first thing in the morning things are feeding my critters and, and that's kind of important, you know. So I start with that. And then I forget what I'm doing. And then I remember, oh, I need to go get in the shower. And so I start getting my stuff together to get in the shower. And I can't find any clothes to wear. Oh, my gosh. You know, where are all my blue jeans? So I start looking for blue jeans. And then I forget. And then I say, what was I doing? What am I doing up here? Was I washing clothes? And then I completely think I'm on a different day. Because it's not clothes washing day. So... I must, it must be a different day of the week, right? Makes sense to me. So then I realized that I don't have enough blue jeans in there to wash a load of blue jeans. Hmm. So what was I doing? Oh my gosh. What was I doing? <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm just thrown for a loop and everything has gone out of my head. So then my daughter calls. And I talk to her, and she reminds me when she asks me about her grandfather. And she asks me about him, and it's like, oh, I was getting in the shower. So I get off the phone with her, and I get in the shower. And then um, I get out of the shower, and I'm back to hunting clothes. So I finally find some clothes. Now, I started this process at 8.30 in the morning, okay? So, now I finally found my clothes, and I get dressed. And I think about how cold it is outside now, because believe me, it's cold. And, um, or at least it's cold for me. I don't live in the north. I live in the south. So, <laughs> you know, if you live in Montana, you probably would think it was warm. But for those of us in South Carolina, it is cold. And, uh... So, I am now dressed, and I'm thinking about the cold. Oh, and I see my bag hanging on the, up on, on the shelf. And I have an emergency bag, a, a carry-with-me bag, whatever you want to call it, that I have packed, and that stays in my car. And I brought it in the house, and I hung it up there where it's in plain sight, and it's bright orange, guys. So, because, you know, i got to have my MS colors. So, it's bright orange. And it had had summer things in it, along with wraps, in case I have a, a, a muscle that needs wrapping. It, I have um, band-aids, in case I start itching and scratch till it bleeds before I realize I'm scratching. Um, I have... Uh, hand sanitizers, um, you know, I've got all this stuff in my bag. Oh, and my emergency meds, because I need those with me all the time. So I have a bottle with a label, because if you don't have the label, you're in trouble. So I have a bottle with the label that is, stays in the bag, and I have a bottle with the label that stays in the house. And then I've always got it. But I needed to change and, and, and put my summer stuff away and get my winter stuff out. So I go to the closet and I start looking for my MS sweatshirt that I have. And I can't find it. And I'm like, oh gosh. So then I look for another long sleeve jacket that I wanted. And I put it on. It's like the liner inside of an of my other jacket. So I put it on and it's too big. And I'm like, dang, you know. I thought I'd gained enough weight, but I guess not. Um, so next thing you know, I'm looking for another jacket. I finally found another zip-up jacket. And then I have 
eventually find the sweatshirt I was looking for that I haven't needed until now. And um, it was hanging on the wrong rack, and that's why I couldn't find it because, you know, I have a system for these things. And when somebody else puts my clothes away or does my laundry, well, then my system gets all mixed up, and then I can't follow it. And that's one of those tricks for those cognitive executive functions of mine that don't work. You know, we are told if you put everything in its place, then you'll always be able to find it. Oh my gosh, I lose more stuff, you know. So anyways, I find my, my sweatshirt. So I have my sweatshirt. I have the liner. Well, not the liner, but I have an, an inside to my bigger jacket. And um, now I just need my shoes and I have to find those. Oh gosh, where did I put my shoes, you know? So I finally find my shoes and then I've forgotten what I was doing again. Oh, I was getting my bag together. So I go back to my bedroom and all the stuff that goes in my bag is laying on the bed and it just needs to be put inside the bag. So then I try and put the stuff in the bag, and with my coordination and my abilities and getting the stuff in the bag, oh my gosh, I started getting frustrated because it wasn't happening. The bag's plenty big enough, but it wasn't happening. So I keep on, and I keep on, and I keep on, and I sit down, and I say, forget it, and I sit down, and I forget about it. And then I remember what I was doing. I'm trying to get to go see my daddy. My daddy's in the hospital. I want to go see my daddy. So, I get back up, and I start trying to fold the stuff up better and better so that I can get it in the bag. Finally, I get my stuff in the bag, and I realize I don't have my watch on. I always wear my watch. Oh, that's right. It's dead, and I forgot to charge it. So, I think, well, I'll take it and charge it in the car, because my car has chargers in it, so why not use it? It's an hour drive almost to the hospital. And uh, so then I have to find that. So eventually I get on the road and I'm talking to my daughter again. And um, I'm on the road and I realize I forget, <laughs> got to set my GPS. And I can't go anywhere without GPS because, oh my gosh, my brain gets lost, <laughs> you know. So even if I'm not physically lost, my brain is lost and I don't know where I'm going anymore. So I call my daddy to ask him how to get there. Just to make sure I know which exit to take. And then guess what? I miss my exit anyways and have to go another way. So finally I get off the highway and I get my GPS on and I start to run out of gas and I have to get gas and then I get confused at the pump trying to use my credit card and when I get confused at the pump trying to use the credit card and I try and do it again well then it tells me to go inside and see the cashier so now I'm held up again so it was 8 30 when I initially talked to my dad when I first woke up and said I am going to get in the shower and get down there and it was three o'clock when I actually arrived and that y'all is my MS and that y'all is what happens whenever my routine gets out of whack and I I spend spent I don't know how many hours are between 8 30 and 2 because I probably, you know, like I said, it takes about an hour. Now, I did get lost, so maybe 145. <laughs> you know, I didn't get that lost. I didn't go that far out of my way. I just went to the next exit down and then went from there. So, um, not much of a difference in the time that it takes. And one way takes you through downtown and one way takes you more back roads. So, you know push comes to shove it's probably you know less than a minute difference but 
How many hours is that between 8.30 in the morning and the 1.45, 2 o'clock? Let's use 2 o'clock. That's easier. So 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30. So that's 15 hours. 530 five and a half hours to take a shower and get down there. Which is ridiculous. But that's my MS. And protecting our cognitive functions is essential and learning strategies such as lists and routines and getting in a good healthy routine is hard but it's worth it it's very much worth it and it does help your cognitive skills develop and or should I say redevelop and you will feel better and you will do less of this sort of I don't know what I'm doing thing and circling like I do you'll lose less um, time you'll lose fewer items you know it all it all comes together and memory that short-term memory that processing memory if you put yourself in terms of a computer you know having enough RAM and your processing power so that you don't freeze up um, that's important to have and you know there's a lot of things that we can do to to help that now um, there will be kinks in the armor you're gonna have these um, these days that your routines and your your everything you do gets rearranged on you and it's not your fault and people who love you you know and we've talked about that as well and and whose opinion matters um but and those are part of my rules as well and they are on msmemedia.com if you want to look at them so um but yeah you know this is like so important and so healthy to do so I encourage you to do this and daddy I cannot wait cannot wait to see you tomorrow so I've got to go it's time um, so remember until then smile big smile often laugh a lot and most importantly love yourself including your wacky MS crap <laughs> so um, gotta say it but it is it's it, it's wacky bye y'all